To move a first person camera according to the player mouse movements, we can use the gimbal mechanism. The gimbal is a pivoted support that is free to rotate around a specified axis. We can attach a gimbal to the parent gimbal, and then we can attach the camera to the final gimbal. The camera final orientation is given by the combination of all gimbal's local orientation. See this. We rotate the first gimbal local axis Y to orient the camera horizontally, so we can rotate the, the child gimbal along the local axis X to orient the camera vertically. Thanks to this simple abstraction, we can just map the mouse linear movement X to the gimbal Y that rotating around Y orients the camera horizontally. So we can map the mouse linear Y movement to the second gimbal that rotating around the axis X rotates the camera vertically. With Entity Component System architecture, we can create a system that rotates the camera by changing the orientation of each entity according to the gimbal axis and the mouse axis we specify for that entity. So let's create a new scene with two nested entity 3D nodes. Each entity is a gimbal, and we need a way to set the gimbal axis, so we can create the component gimbalaxis.gd with the axis variable. This variable indicates the gimbal axis. To create a new component, you need to create a script that extends components after adding the variable axis, it's ready to be registered. Copy the path and navigate to the ECS window, click on the button New System or Component and paste the path here. Now the component is available, and indeed we can add it to our entity gimbals. The first entity is our gimbal with axis Y, so the default axis value is just fine, while the child is the entity with the axis X, so we have to change the axis value accordingly. Each entity has its own gimbal information, and we need to specify which mouse axis is going to control that gimbal. Again, we can create a new component to add this information, so let's create mouseaxis.gd that specifies which mouse axis rotate this gimbal. The axis variable this time is an integer where 0 means x and 1 means y. Again, I have created a new script that extends the component class and after adding the variable axis, I can register it by copying the path and pasting to the new system or component window. We can now add the component to our gimbals. The first gimbal rotates horizontally around the axis Y, so it's controlled by the mouse axis X and here we can set 0. The child gimbal rotates around the axis X vertically, so it's controlled by the mouse axis Y, and here we can set 1. Now the gimbal and its mouse mapping is ready. We can conclude our scene by adding the transform component to both gimbals, since both gimbals will move in space. Additionally, to the gimbal X we have to add the child component, so it's parented with the gimbal Y. At this point we just need to add the camera node as child of the gimbal X. The camera is a regular node attached to the entity. By default the entity transform is not synchronized with the node transform unless the parameter sync transform on the entity node is set to true. So let's take it. Now we can place this new scene in our level and we can even play it. Of course nothing moves when I move the mouse because the system is not yet created. As said, we will have one system that will rotate each gimbal separately according to the specified component data, so let's create the rotategimbal.gd. It extends the system class, so let's overwrite the prepare and for each functions. Inside the prepare function, we have to specify the component that the fetched entity must have. Our system has to fetch the entities with the gimbal axis component and the mouse axis component and transform component. So we can specify this by using the function with component. Notice it's taking gimbal axis and mouse axis immutably because this system is just need to read the axis values, while it takes the transform component mutably because it needs to change the entity orientation. Now we need to specify the input data back that we use to read the mouse motion inputs and the frame time data back to know the frame delta time to smoothly change the gimbal orientation. Now we can code the for each, so let's add all the fetched data as function arguments. As you can imagine from the prepare function, this function is executed for each entity that has a gimbal axis component, mouse axis component and transform component each frame. So in this specific case it will be executed twice per frame, one time for the gimbal Y entity and the other with gimbal X entity. 
The first part of our system is simply the input fetching, to know how much the mouse moved in this frame. The input data bag has this information, and we can use the function getMouseMotionInputEvent to extract it. Note that we collect the movement for the axis that this entity is looking at. Now that we have the total mouse movement done in this frame, we can use it to compute the camera movement. So we multiply it by delta and the camera speed. Usually this is a player setting, here it's just a const. The only remaining task is to actually rotate the gimbal, so we can use the function rotated to get the current rotated gimbal basis, so we can assign it back. Our system is now ready, let's register it as we did for the components. Then we can add it to our pipeline, select Word ECS node and click Add System. It's added as last one by default, but I want that the system is executed before the physics, so let's move it to position 2. Here our gimbal mechanism is moving the camera according to the mouse motion. To quickly recap, we created two components to assign the gimbal axis and mouse axis to an entity. We created a scene with two nested gimbals that rotates thanks to a system that reads the mouse motion. Notice that this mechanism is not bound to the camera. Indeed, if in future we will need to rotate something with the mouse, for example a puzzle, we can just use these components to reuse this mechanism. That's it, see you in the next video, bye!